Hey everybody, this is Dr. Rich Etchberger again coming to you from the Uinta Basin Regional Campus of Utah State University. And uh, today I've got something really exciting for you, I hope, anyway. Uh, this morning I'm going to be going out in the field uh, with Dr. Brent Bibles, uh, who's on the uh, staff here. He's a wildlife biologist, part of the uh, wildlife science program here at Utah State University at the Uinta Basin Campus. And what Brent and I are going to do this morning is we're going to head out in the field and we're going to try to, to uh, capture some raptors. Raptors, some of you might know, are uh, birds of prey and they include things like eagles and hawks and owls and those kinds of things. Uh, one of the things that Brent is interested in doing when he goes out and captures raptors is to go out there, uh, capture the bird, and then put a band on the bird's leg that helps us do uh, scientific research on where these birds go and what they do. Uh, one of the things that we're going to be doing this morning when we go out there is using something called a balsha tree trap. And we'll show you some more information about that, that particular trap once we get out there. Uh, but what the trap essentially does is uses some small rodents and those small rodents are used to lure in the bird and the bird comes down and it, it tries to grab the rodents and it gets tangled up in the trap and then we're able to do the processing that we need to do. Uh, this should be a really exciting morning out there. Uh, Brent's got about 20 years of experience doing this kind of work and uh, this is the kind of thing for our students when they're able to go out in the field with us to get some really great experience. So come along with us, we're going to be heading out in the field and uh, hopefully uh, see some raptors and be able to capture some. Hi, um, we've been out trapping raptors, um, hawks, birds of prey, and what the trap system that we're using today is um, balsha tree. Uh, it's derived from a very ancient technique, uh, been around for falconry purposes for thousands of years, um, or at least a thousand years. and. This is basically a little wire cage, has some nooses on it. Um, these are made out of monofilament, covered in nooses, and you put some sort of lure um, in them. Uh, here we have gerbils. Uh, depends on what type of bird you're going after as to what lure works best. But um, the basic process is you find a bird that's hunting, um, it's hungry, it sees the prey, you place this out where it can see it fairly close and the bird comes down, swings in and gets its talons hooked up on the, in the nooses. And you have the bird. Um, you may notice that I have a little bag here tied to a rope that's got some weight in it. And this is a drag. Um, one of the things you have to be concerned about when you're trapping is the safety of the bird and so you don't want to put the trap out where it's going to cause the bird to fly in front of traffic if you're trapping near a road, um, possibly get hit. You don't want it to drag the trap out onto the road or into a barbed wire fence and get, all, and get hung up. So this pretty much allows it to move a little bit but not, um, but not carry it into an area where it might be in danger. Once we capture the bird, um, you come up, you grab it, secure its talons, remove the noose, and then um, you can process it for banding. The purpose of the trapping is to put bands on the bird, and we put Fish and Wildlife Service band. It's a lock-on band for raptors. Um, the band is sized to fit the particular leg and has an individual number on it, so if that band, if that bird is recovered, you can tell which bird it was, um, where it was banded, when it was banded, um, and get a variety of information comes from that. In addition, we take, um, the, while having the bird in hand, we t um, take advantage of that and obtain a variety of measurements, wing cord, tail cord, tarsus measurements, um, check its condition, um, and a variety of pieces of information that you can only have when the bird is in hand. Frequently what we're doing also is putting on collar bands for particular uses and that allows us to uh, visually recite the bird. Um, the bird we banded today, I did not, um, I did not do that. Um, we just put the Fish and Wildlife Service band, but that allows you to individually ID the bird if you do do that um, with only binoculars. 
uh, information that you can get from banding the birds, uh, longevity, survival rates, movement uh, patterns, uh, and a variety of other pieces of information. Well, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? Uh, we had a great morning out there in the field. Uh, some of that footage was just spectacular. Uh, it was great being out there with Dr. Bibles. I learned a lot about banding hawks while we were out there. Uh, a couple of things to remember about this is that, uh, number one, uh, we were out there, we were able to catch that Swainson's hawk, uh, get it banded. Hopefully we'll collect some scientific data from that bird over the years. Um, also, this is the kind of thing that really makes, uh, you know, being a student here at the Uinta Basin campus uh, such a great opportunity to be able to go out and do these kinds of things, get this great hands-on experience that, with, with wildlife that we have here at the Uinta Basin. Um, what more can I say? Uh, come and join us. <laughs>